welcome you to the Lighthouse in Cherry Tree, Pennsylvania, with founders and pastors Ken and Wilda Brown. And now, let's go into the service already in progress. Six little stories with lots of meaning, and I'm going to read them to you. I want you to listen real close. Number one, once all villagers decide to pray for rain, and on the day of the prayer, all the people gathered, but only one little boy came with an umbrella. That's faith. Think about it now. They were praying for rain, but they didn't come prepared for rain, but the little boy did. That's where we got to come to with faith with God. We got to come to that point with God. Number two, when you throw your babies in the air, we don't do that a whole lot anymore. My Uncle Ray used to do that with all our, grand, our grandbabies. He would get them. Some of you older people know we used to do all this crazy stuff. Take your kid and throw them in the air and catch them when they come down. Jack, you've probably done it already. But anyhow, it says, when you throw your babies in the air, they laugh because they know you'll catch them. That's trust. That's where we need to get with God. We need to get the trust of God in us that no matter what we go through, no matter how high we get thrown or how far we get thrown, we know that our lives are in Him. We have faith in Him. Now we have trust in Him this morning. Number three, every night we go to bed without any assurance of being alive the next morning. Do you ever think of that when you go to bed? Am I, going to be, am I going to wake up tomorrow? I do. I, I know I'm a lot older than the rest of you. But that has nothing to do with it. You could be a, a year old and still want to know, am I going to be alive tomorrow? But when we go to bed, do we, think, do we have that assurance that we're going to be alive the next morning? But you know what? We still set the alarms to wake up. Think about it. We're not sure. We don't know if we're going to wake up. But we have enough trust in God that we set the alarm to get up. That's called hope. If I just re if, if this is the only message I give to you this morning, think of all the words I'm talking about. We have to have faith. We have to have trust. We have to have hope in Him. Number four, we plan big things for tomorrow in spite of the zero knowledge of the future. We just planned Kim's big birthday party yesterday. We, did it. we didn't know if we was going to be here to have it, but we planned it anyhow. And why did we do that? Because we have confidence in knowing what God's going to do. Amen? We plan that, not knowing that we're not going to make it, but we plan it because we know what God's doing. Amen? That means we have confidence in Him. Number five, we see the world suffering, but still... We get married and have children. That's love. Amen? It doesn't matter. It doesn't, we don't look around. We just love that person so much, and we get married, and we want to have children. I had four of them, and I know what it's all about. And that's what we want to get a hold of. That is called love. Come on. That's, that's the love of God you have in your heart. You know, when you get married, you, you get married, you don't know what you're marrying. Yes, I did. No, you do know. You better know who you're marrying and what you're marrying. Because you know what? You may have made a big mistake. And that has happened a lot, a lot of us. And it happens. But God says, I am love. He wants to be the center of your life. He wants to be that love in your life. Yes, I want you to marry somebody you love. I love that man. He's the only man I ever had. Not too many of you people sitting here can say that this morning. I'm 80 years old, almost 81. But anyhow, I have never had another man in my life. Kim, too. How many here can put your hand up and say that? There's another one. There's another one. See that? Harry, put your hand down. We don't allow liars in the church. But that's okay, because sometimes, now listen, I'm not saying it's okay to get married and then get a divorce. I'm saying sometimes we make a mistake, and that happens in a lifetime. But God always has somebody special for us waiting on us. Come on, think about it. Look at Melissa and Harry. Let's use them for an excuse. 
Same with Jill's. God has somebody waiting for Jill. We know that. My Renee says, no, no more men in my life, but God has somebody special for her. Janet and Clayton, God brought them back together. Think about it. Just look around and say, well, God, you really do have somebody special for me. Think about that this morning. You people that are single, you looking for a man or a woman, ask God. He will bring the right person in your life. Amen. <clears throat> okay, let's keep on going. An old man's shirt was written. There was a, written a sentence that said on his shirt, I'm not 80 years old. I just said that, didn't I? I forgot that was in here. <clears throat> I'm sweet 16. With 64 years of experience. That is a message in itself. The experience that you face will make you grow in the Lord. Amen. But he said, this is attitude. That's the kind of attitude we need to have. People say, well, how old are you? I'm not going to tell you because I don't feel that old most of the time, except when Harry has to help me up on the platform. <laughs> but anyhow, but just think of those things. We have to have faith. We have to have trust. We have to have hope. We have to have confidence. We have to have love. And number eight or number six, we need to have an attitude. That makes a big difference in your life is your attitude. Are you serving God to the fullest extent or are you only serving him halfway? Give him your full life. Give him the full attitude that you have. And it says, have a happy day. Live your life like these six stories. Remember, good friends are the rare jewels of life, difficult to find and impossible to replace. You can't replace God. No matter how you try, you can't replace him. He is there for us in every step we take. Amen? Amen. I've been thinking about Thanksgiving coming, and then I'm just thinking about how thankful we need to be. Just sit here and think of, I'm going to give you a few seconds or a few minutes. Think about your life. Thank God where you're at. Thank God what he's done for you. Where he's taking you. He's taking us to a marvelous thing. See, we, we look around and we say, well, the churches are way down in number. Da, da, da. But God's still in control. By the first of the year, 2023, God's going to do a miraculous work. Come on. Come on. Our government's going to make a complete turnaround, even though it didn't look like it with some of the things that they voted for and come, you know what I'm saying? We're, we live in Pennsylvania, people. We've lived with this all our life. Even though you're not a Democrat, you're Pennsylvanian. Does that tell you anything? Live with it because God's in control. It doesn't matter what they say, where they're going, but God knows and he's controlling everything. It doesn't look like it sometimes, but God is in control, and he's going to run our nation. Amen? It's coming back. It's coming back because God says it's coming back, and we have to walk in that truth this morning. First thing we're going to look at is in, we're going to look at <clears throat> the favor in return, the gratitude for your faith. We're going to look into Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, if you have your Bible. If not... It's probably up on the screen by now. <clears throat> First thing we're going to look at is our gratitude. Our desire to do a favor in return or our thankfulness. That's what we want to talk about. This is the Thanksgiving season. We want to be thankful for everything we have. That's what God's telling us. Are you thankful for everything you have? Not just the good things, not just the money, not just the, all the stuff you have. But are you just thankful the fact that you're alive and that you live for Almighty God? That's the most important thing this morning. That if I didn't say anything else this morning, that we're thankful that we live for God. That we have a Holy Ghost-filled church to come to and to worship. Not everybody has that. Not everybody's, A lot of people, they just go to church because it's Sunday morning. They go to church and say, well, I've been to church today. Now that's not all for a week. And that's the truth. If you look, the majority of the people would tell you that. But not here. We come here because we come to find God. We come to find what he has for us. We, find, we come here and he tells us where to walk and how to talk and what to do. So that's what we need to do. We need to get 
thankful and get the favor of God in our life this morning. Colossians 1, 2 says, To the holy and faithful brothers and sisters, and I'm going to talk to you, Morning Star Ministries, this morning, because you are faithful. You're here, and you serve God. Amen. Being united to Christ, followers of Jesus, released riches, favor, and heavenly um, peace through our lives, through the anointed one. That's where we need to walk. We need to realize that we are anointed. God has given, and Jesus has given his life for us, and we walk with him. Verses uh, 3 to 5 says, we thank God for you. And do you think we don't? We thank God for every one of you every day. We think about you. I think about most of you off and on during the week. Sometimes I might forget about you once in a while, but that's okay because you don't remember me every day either, do you? Come on. But we, we have to start remembering each other and thanking God for your Christian life, that you have somebody to turn to. If you're hurting, Lorraine over here knows, if she's hurting, she knows she can call anybody in this church that she knows, and she knows they're going to hold her up in prayer. Prayer is the only answer you have. Because God is here, but he isn't here in flesh. He's here in spirit. And when you pray, he answers our prayers this morning. So we need to thank God for everyone that's in this church this morning. Look around you and say, God, thank you for all my friends. God, thank you, whether male or female or whatever you are. <laughs> we don't go there because we don't talk about that kind of stuff that they do in the world. We talk about he and she and she and he. And that's all it is, because that's all God created this morning. Amen? But anyhow, we want to thank God for each one of you that you, we have here this morning. Because God has brought you here this morning. Because for your faith in Christ and the love for others, your favor, your peace, your spiritual blessings. Verse five, uh, 5a says, Faith and love that spring forth from the hope store, stored up for you in heaven. What do we have? We have faith, hope, and love. You know, if that's the only thing, three things that we have, we would have it in our life. We would have life made. But you know, some of us don't realize how much hope and how much love and how much faith that we need to go when we wake up every day and go to bed every night, even when you're sleeping. You need to have faith, hope, and love in your life because that's the only thing that's going to take you through. Love surpasses anything that you can think about. You sit here and think about it. If you didn't love somebody, if you didn't love a friend, you didn't love somebody in your family, who would you have? Yeah. Nothing. You have Christ, but when you're here on earth, who do you have? You've got to think about God. I need your faith. I need your love. I need you to walk with me. I need you to talk with me. I need to have faith, hope, and love. Because love is a special thing that God has given to each one of us. It surpasses anything that we have. And verse 5b says that you have already heard the truth, the truth of the gospel. And you can't sit here in this church and say that you didn't ever hear the truth of the gospel. Amen? Because God is truth. We preach nothing but the truth. We preach nothing but the word of God. You might go into some churches and you get a story or you get this or that, but not in this church. You can't walk out of here and say, I never heard the word of God. If you say that, then you're not telling the truth. Because right there's a holy man of God that preaches the word of truth all the time. We have a man back here that preaches nothing but the truth. That's what we got to learn to live on. we got to learn to live on the Word of God. We come here and we hear about it. Don't just hear about it. Use it. Take it with you. Go out and witness to somebody. Talk about Jesus if you have to. Don't push yourself. Don't push yourself on people because they don't want that. But let them see your life. <coughs> and they will know that you've been with Jesus. Amen. Verse 6 says, All over the world... This gospel, it's bearing fruit. It's bringing others to Christ. How many remember the little old chorus we used to sing for years? All over the world, the Spirit is moving. Amen? And it is moving. It's moving all over. People are getting... Uh, I've watched some of the... I don't watch TV very often. But a lot of these revivals, if you watch the ones that, uh, on uh, Flashpoint, God's pulling people in that you would never even think about. Some are using the excuse they can't. We have people, that, relatives, that will say, well, maybe I do need to find God, but I don't think I want to. Come on, you know you have relatives like that. We all do. But we've got to find God because he's the only thing all over the world 
my spirit is moving. He's not going to leave us. He's going to stay by us. He's going to take us through anything that we have to go through. All we have to do is pray and ask God because God is right there because that's what it's saying. All over the world, the spirit is moving. It means we're growing. We're planting in, we're being planted in the word. If you come here and you say you don't know the word of God, that's your own fault. Because we come here and we plant you. We feed you. They, the ministers come up and feed each one of us the word of God. That's what you need planted inside you this morning. I don't know what you want planted inside you, but I want the word of God. I want the word of God implanted in me. And it goes on to say we need to have increase, we need to increase in God's grace. Favor in the love of God. Loving kindness and truth. My goodness, proven doctrine. Act exact, honest, sincere, and loyal. Oh my, right there. You have your life right there. You have it all. You say, well, I can, I can have all that. Yes, you can. And you already do. I know all you sitting here this morning. You have that love of God in your life. You have that kindness in your life. You have that truth in your life. But you want people, other people, to hear it and see it and find it. And that's what we're here for today. Uh, <clears throat> bearing fruit is, et is eternal life. It's reality of God's grace. If we live it, we do it, we'll have it. And we'll be in heaven someday shortly. Amen. Verse 8 says, You're loving in the Spirit. Love that Holy Spirit-inspired life being demonstrated through your love by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You get the Holy Spirit and your people will know who you are. If you live the way you're supposed to live, they'll want what you have. Amen? That's what we're teaching you here this morning. The next thing we're going to look at is a life worthy of the Lord in verses 9 through 14. Verse 9 says, Desire that you might be filled with the perfect knowledge. We don't want just a little bit of knowledge. We want all of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. All that is known, the facts that can be learned, his will, through all our spiritual wisdom. And about a couple months ago, or maybe longer, I preached on and talked about the river in our life, the reservoirs. We have to have a reservoir in our life. If towns didn't have a reservoir with water in, what would you do? You wouldn't have water. You'd be dry. And that's where we are with Christ. We need to have a deep reservoir of Christ down in our life. We need to have wisdom and understanding. And that's what the, the reservoir is. We get understanding, spiritual understanding is what we need in our life so that we can go on. That's why we need spiritual understanding. And that, what does that mean? It knows that the knowledge of good judgment based on experience. Number three, we need to have understanding. We need to learn and know and discern what's going on around about us. Some people don't have no idea where they're walking. They don't know what they're talking. They don't know what they're doing because they don't have Jesus in their life. That's where we need to come to this morning. We need to come to a deep relationship with him. We need to come to him with fruit-bearing branches. If, we, if we're bearing fruit, people, you should have people sitting all over this church. We're all guilty. Are you inviting people to church? Probably not. You think about it. You're probably not. Come on. You're right, Harry. He's saying no. We're all guilty. I'm just as guilty as you are. Every now and then I'll say to somebody, well, you should be in church. Well, that doesn't mean they're coming to church. You need to encourage them. They need to be in church. And that's where we need to come to in our life. And verse 10 says, Live a life worthy of the Lord. And may please him in every way. Are you pleasing the Lord in the way you live? Huh? Think about it this morning. Where the way you live, does people see God in your life? Does see see people God you walking with God in your life this morning? That's what we need to get a hold of. We need to get a hold of <clears throat> full satisfaction of bringing joy to the Father. When He looks down and He sees you witnessing to somebody, you think He doesn't get happy? Most certainly he does, because he wants people to know who he is this morning. <clears throat> There's number one is fruitfulness, producing much fruit, preannually all year long or lifelong. I used to, I could never figure out what preannually and annually meant. Now I do because I studied this out. Preannually is something you have all the time, constantly from beginning to end. Annually. It, the fruit you'll have, the apples will only last so long, and then they're gone. But not in God. God wants you to have 
perennially li lifelong living in your life. He wants you to bring benefits for good reason to persons and things. Number two, he wants you to profit, gaining good from anything, full of knowledge, increased knowledge of God in all that is done. He wants us to be full of him this morning so that when we go out of here, people will know who you serve and who you love because that's he, he wants to see his fullness in you. He wants you to be enlarged with his explosive praise and power this morning. Think about it. Are you happy? Do you go out of here? Do you talk to people? Are you happy? Do they see Jesus in your life? Think about it. Come on. Is your life full of Jesus? That's where we need to come to. We need to come to the place of we're so full of God. And I'm not telling you to go out there and preach down somebody's throat. That isn't what they want to hear. They want to just see your life live your life the way you need to live it. Amen. <clears throat> Number three, we need to be strengthened in him. We need to be made strong. And all power going according to his glorious giving, glory, might, and great power. We need to have explosive power in our life. That when we walk around, people will know who we serve. You don't have to tell people. They watch your life. They hear what you say. They watch where you walk. They watch what you talk. Let me tell you, you think, oh, no. Oh, yes, they do. Let me tell you, they will know. As soon as you make a mistake... They'll know who you are. They'll know you've made a mistake. So we want to come to that point where we're strengthened and we're made strong. We have all kind of power, his glorious power, might, and great power living inside us. Number four, the great endurance, power to last, holding out to the end, bearing up, never gives up, worthy of power manifested in his glory. How many times do you try to do something and it didn't work, so you just gave up? Not with God. You can't do that. He's saying here, we have to ha have great endurance. We have to have power that lasts. We have to have, keep holding on and bearing up and never give up. Even though we go through trials as a Christian, they look at you and say, oh, you're a Christian. You shouldn't be going through that. Well, why not? Because God puts us through things. He lets us go through things to let people see how much power God has. Because when you go through it, and you come out on top, they say, oh, how did that happen? Because I walk with God. I talk with God. I move with God because he is my great endurance. His power lasts forever. He never gives up on us. We give up on him lots of times. Be honest with me. You're sitting here this morning, and lots of times you go through some things, and it's your own fault. Think about it. Don't blame it on God. Everybody will write, oh, well, God did that. No, God didn't. You did. Because you didn't put your trust in him. You didn't put your uh, bearing up with everything that you went through. You didn't give him worthy of his power. When we give everything to God, he's right there for us. He's right there taking care of us. And one of the things he gives us is patience. Huh? How many would like that this morning? Do you have patience this morning? Think about it. Sit there and think about it. Do I have patience this morning? I don't know. Yeah, yes you do, because God gives you patience. All you have to do is ask him. God, I need patience this morning. I need to be willing to put up with waiting. <clears throat> I need to put up with pain and trouble. You're going to get in. Don't think, well, I'm living a Christian. I'm not going to be sick. I'm not going to have... Yes, you are. There's going to be times that you're living in this earth. <coughs> Excuse me. Right here in this earth, you're going to go through pain. You're going to go through trouble. That's with Courtney and them today. God's with them. We prayed for them. God's walking with them. But that doesn't mean they're not going to go through things. That doesn't mean we're not going to go through things, people. We are. But that's when we say, hey, we trust in God. God's going to walk with me. God's going to talk with me. God's going to take me through all this because I serve him. That's where the patience comes in. You say, oh, God, if you ever pray for anything, pray for patience. I'm serious. Pray for patience. Because you know what? The patience run out after a while. And if you don't have God on your side, you're in big trouble. Amen? The next thing we want to look at is joyfully, filled with great joy, full of joy, that sets apart us from Christians, endurance and patience. We need to be <coughs> in different pleasure and pain. They don't react with their feelings. We can't react how we feel all the time. Sometimes we don't feel very good. 
you know, we feel we don't feel good physically. I'm talking about, and in, in emotionally, lots of times we don't feel good. But we've got to hang on with the joyful pride of God. That's what God God wants us to have so much joy in our heart and in our lives that good people, when they see you, they will want what you have. That's what God's telling us this morning. Come on, people, we got to live so close to God that people will want what you have. Come on, you want them to want what you have, then start having the joy of the Lord in your house, in your mouth. And another thing, this is some of the, in verse 12, we talk about thankfulness. That's this week coming up. We're having thankful. We're having Thanksgiving. We got to learn to give thanks to the Father. We have to be learned to be grateful. We have to learn to have gratitude and pray, pleasure, joyful gratitude, freely given to us by living in with God in the fight. So the, you live in a fight all the time. You live in America. You live no matter where you live. You're not going to be free only in Jesus Christ. You have to have Jesus as number one in your life. He wants us to be thankful. Thankfulness, giving thanks to the Father. Be grateful for what you have. We're so, in, you know, we get so caught up that we forget how good we have it. Come on. Think about it. You have it pretty good in your life. Come on. Just say Amen. You're going to go through a few trouble, tr trials in life, but that's part of life. But just think how good you have it. If you didn't serve the Lord, you wouldn't have what you have. Come on. You look at the world and say, oh, yeah, they have it. They have money. They have money. You know what's coming to the point? They're not going to have money. You look around you. You look at the elections we just went through. Look at what we've been through. But you are grateful because you have God. You serve a powerful God. He's going to take care of you. There's going to be people say to you, well, how, how do you afford this or how do you afford that? And you say, because I serve a living God. I serve a living Savior, and I'm grateful for him. He makes us qualified. He makes us sufficient. He makes us uh, good for the job he gives us. Sometimes we don't like our jobs we have in life, people. <laughs> but God pro provides a job for you, and you have to be take your position Hold your title before the Lord and before people. Make him be first prize in your life. When they see you, they say, well, how do you handle that? Because I serve God first. And he takes us through. Amen. He makes us fit for the inheritance of the things of the kingdom to the light. That show the light to the world. And that's what you're doing. When you go out and you serve the Lord and you do the things God's called you to do. And people say, how do you do that? Because I serve a risen Savior. I serve the light that leads me. People say, well, we're in such a down thing in, in the United States of America, all over the world. But you aren't because you serve the greatest light that ever came to the world. And that's Jesus Christ. He has delivered. He's rescued you from the dominion of darkness. We could be in darkness if we didn't live for the Lord. You look around people in this world and they're in darkness. They're in big trouble. But if they just give their life to God and walk with God and talk with God and pray, you don't have to have prayers all the time. You can have a simple prayer. Sometimes God just wants to hear your heart. He just wants to hear you give a simple prayer to know that you love him and care for him and care that he takes care of you. That's all he wants to know because that's where we need to come to. We need to come to that place that we have the authority <clears throat> to take over the things in our life. Now, into the kingdom of the Son of God, he sets us free. He removed us. He reestablished. I like these words right here. I wrote them down. I have them all colored up if you see my pages up here. It says, he said that the Son's love has set us free. He's removed us. He's reestablished us. He's restored us and made us new. He's transplanted us into the kingdom. Transplant means when you move from one place to another. If you, if most of you here have done gardens, I know you're all old enough to know what a garden is and how to plant stuff. And if you moved those plants around, they're going to grow. They're going to grow. But it's because what you're doing, you're move, removing them, you're reestablishing them, re you're restoring the plants, uh, uh, the ground underneath them. And that's what God does with us. He wants us to move around. He don't want us just to sit back in a corner, fold our arms and say, well, I serve God, here I am. No, 
He wants you to move around. He wants you to be different. He wants to be able to reestablish you. He wants to restore us is what he wants to do. He wants to make us new all over. He wants to transplant us. Do you ever think of that? Do you ever sit and think, God, what am I doing? You know? And God says, you just hold on because I'm transplanting you into something new. And when he does, you're going to be thankful. You're going to be, it's going to be powerful because he wants to make you like a reservoir. A reservoir, you say, well, it just sits there. No, the water keeps coming in and going out and coming in and going out and coming in. You wouldn't have fresh water if it just sat there, right? So that's why he wants to put a reservoir inside of us. He wants us to have spiritual understanding that when he comes through us, it's going to be his will and his way. Amen? And we're going to do what he wants us to do. We have to release the redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing we have this morning. We're sitting here, all, all of us are Christians. I know we are. I can look at each one of you and know where you, where you walk and what you talk and what you do because you live for him. Number 14, verse 14 says, we have redemption. What does that mean? We can buy back. We can pay off a ransom. We can rescue deliverance for sin, forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's the only one. We go to him. He buys us back even after we've gone into sin. And we've all done that. We've all done wrong. But we go to him and he buys us back. And he takes care of us. He pays off all those sins that we've done. And he makes us clean. He delivers us from sin. He forgives us of sin. Aren't you glad this morning you can sit here and say, I'm glad I serve God. I'm glad he forgave me. I'm glad he forgives me every day. Every day we all make mistakes. We all say stuff we shouldn't say. We all do things we shouldn't do. But yet we have his redemption to buy us back. And he takes us back. You know, sometimes, Jack, we look and we think, well, well that was stupid what I did today. Yeah. Think about it. It, it it's, might be something silly, something, what I want to say, something stupid we do. But all we have to do we have a God that cares. He, all we have to do is say, God, forgive me. God, help me get, get rid of this. Ransom me. Rescue me. Deliver me from this sin. We all make mistakes every day. Just because Pastor Cindy's the pastor, Pastor Ken, Pastor Rick, all, all, all you people that are sitting here, you're, none of us is any different than the rest of you. you. You're all the same. We all make mistakes. But all we have to do is come back to Jesus Christ through the blood. That's what he's telling us here this morning. We have redemption power. Come on, get a hold of that. Say, I have redemption power this morning. You have it in your life this morning. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. And it says, what? Do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost received from God? A sanctuary... He lives within you. You are not your own. Once you get Jesus Christ inside your life and you start to serve him, you're no longer on your own. You have to walk where he wants you to walk. You have to talk what he wants you to talk. Wherever you go, he wants you to ask him, God, is it okay if I'm doing this? How many times we don't do that? We don't ask God if it's okay. We need to. You know, when we're growing up, we're like that. We were kids, you know. We're growing up and we come to the point in life where, oh, I don't need to ask my mom and dad permission to do that. I'm growing up. I can do my own thing. Well, you know, when you look back, sometimes now, when you look back and think, boy, if I listened to mom and dad, I wouldn't have went through what all I went through. And so that's what God's telling us here. Talk to him. Ask him. When he's telling you, you're gonna, when you see you're going to go through something, ask God to go with you. Ask God, just talk to him. He's right there for you. He's, he's not trillions of miles up. His spirit lives right here. He's like we was talking this morning. That lady walked in this church. She's looking at the beauty up here, but she felt something she never felt before when she walked in here. People will tell you that. This church is totally different from any other church you walk into. Because when you walk in through those front doors, not clear into there, it starts at the glass doors 
when you walk in, you feel the presence of God. If there's nobody in here. Now, they were here. You know, and I'm not saying they weren't here. They were here to hear what she said. But she could have walked in here on her own and felt the very same thing. And that's what we need. We need people to see. You don't have to talk. You don't have to show off. You don't have to say stuff. You don't have to tell people they're going to hell. They already know that. All they need to do is see how good God is in your life. See where your life's leading you. That's all you need to do. Is show people who you are because of who you have. Not because you're Turtle Bernowski. It's because you have Christ in you. That people want what you have. Jill, Jill went to a new job, you know, and, and people are watching her life. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't say anything. To, yes, she does, because she's really... She's an outgoer, let me tell you. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you said the other day, but it was good, whatever it was. And I said to the pastor, wow, I don't know if I could talk like that to people or not. But she's like a brand new person, and she wants everybody to feel what she has. That's how we should feel. We should want people to want God. You don't want to act like stupid, everyday stupid. You want to act perfect and pure before God so that people will want what you have. She went to that new job and God's going to want what she has because she's not afraid to tell them what she has. You know, that's where we all, we're all get to that point sometimes. We sit around with our mouths shut and we need to open our mouth and talk about God when we go places. Not that you push God on people. They're not going to want it if you push it. But if they see God in your life and see where you walk, Brother Rick, they'll want what you have. Amen? They'll want what you have. Okay, let's go on down now. I um, forgot where I was. <laughs> well, I was talking about being brought with the price, the blood of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 says, 1 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, deliverance, release that God's abundant grace and richness of his grace producing much. My, if we didn't have the power of God in our life, what would we do? Huh? Think about it. What would you do if you didn't have God? Verse 8 says, This superabundant grace is already powerfully working in us, releasing within us all forms of wisdom and practice and understanding. If we walk the life, not just talk the life, Walk the life. Live the life that God wants you to live. He, talk what God wants you to talk. People will know who you serve. You don't have to be blunt and burst out and say, hey, I want you to know I serve God. You don't have to do that because they will know by your life. They will know how you talk. They will know where you walk. First Peter 1 18, verses 18 and 19 said, You were redeemed with corruptible things with silver or gold from your aimless life. But the precious blood of Christ, who like a spotless, unblemished lamb, was sacrificed for us. Can you imagine that Christ gave his whole life just for you? Think about it. Just for you. Just for me. Just for each one of us in here. God gave his life for us. Can you give your life for somebody? Think about it. That'd be pretty hard. Can you imagine somebody walk up? I think I could. I don't know. I, somebody would say, well, we'll take Pastor and we'll shoot you. And I'd say, go ahead, shoot me. I don't care. You know, or, how about your kids? You know, no, you're going to give you, are you going to give your life up for your kids? Think about it. Then what about Jesus? Jesus gave his life up for each one of us. He cared so much that he didn't care what he had to go through, that he gave his life for us. Amen? And let's go on down. Hebrews 10, 25 says, Not forsaking or neglecting or assembling together as the habit of some people, admonishing one another, and all more faithfully as you see the day approaching. We need to stick together. We need to pray for each other. We need to be there for each other. God depends on us to get the message out. And I have down here Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. He says, making disciples. And we just did that, what, a month ago, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I command you to do. Never forget that I am with you every day, 
to the completion of time. Grace is with us all the time. That was so important. When we had that baptismal here that Sunday morning, people's lives were changed. And that's where we have to come. That's what it's saying here. We have to say, hey, now we've prayed, we've baptized them. We have to pray for them. Not just pray for yourself. I'm not just preaching about you this morning. I'm preaching about people that you meet, people that you lead, people that know what your life is. They want what you have. You want them to want what you have? Then you have to live it. You've got to walk it. You've got to talk it this morning. God depends on us to be part of the work. In Romans 12, verses 8 through, or 4 through 8, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. It just talks about all the gifts that you should have, that you should be able to give uh, to other people. Next, I'm going to talk about what must we must overcome failure. Faithfulness is not perfection. A faithful Christian is not one who never makes a mistake. Do you ever you never make a mistake? All the time, we make a mistake, but God picks us right back up. He says, come on, get up. Get, get, let me get a hold of your shirt tail and let me pull you up and let's get you straightened up, Melissa. You, you made a mistake, but I'm going to take you back up. And it, it says in Psalms 45, 145, 14, the Lord upholds all who fall and he raises you back up when you bow down to him. Amen? Sometimes we're... Hey, we're, we're living in this life and we walk this life and we're going to make mistakes and we're going to fall and people are going to say, oh, look what you did. You say, yeah, but my God picked me back up. I'm back where God wanted me to be. In Proverbs 24, 16, it says, a righteous <coughs> man may fall seven times and rise again. Can you imagine? If we look back and see how many times we made mistakes and tripped up and fell and walked away from God, but yet he took us back. We wouldn't do that to a lot of people. We'd say, oh, I don't have nothing to do with them anymore. Look what they did to me. But God doesn't do that. He takes you right back, puts you right back where he had you. And Micah 7, 8, he says, when I fall, I will rise. When, I, <coughs> when I'm in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Isn't that powerful? When we fall, we make mistakes. We're human. He knows. He looks at us. He, says, he sees where we walk. He knows how we talk. But he wants you to know that he is here for you no matter where you've been, what you've done. Don't fall. Trust God. We make mistakes, but he's there to forgive us is what he's saying. But he's still trying to tell us, come on, walk close to me. He wants you to walk close to him. He wants you to make a newness in your life today. He wants us to walk close to him so that when we do make a mistake, he's there and he picks us back up. Amen. Aren't you glad he picked you back up? Goodness, who, who knows where we'd be at? Amen. Reggie, who, where would you at, be at, Reggie, if God didn't pick you up, back up? Come on. You think about all the things we've done in life, made mistakes, and pastors made mistakes, and everybody in here, you can't sit here and say you never made a mistake. Because God will look down and say, now, you're my child, now you're lying. Because you have made mistakes, but I am always with you. He's there to forgive us, walk with us, and take us where we're going. Because we're going to a mighty, we're going to come into a mighty revival. And people say, well, where is it? Just hang on. Because it's here. It's here. It's already here. People just don't really realize what they're saying. But one of the examples, Peter's a real good one. When you talk about somebody making mistakes in the Bible, think about it. Read about people, Peter in the New Testament. He was a mess. He was a mess. They, he followed God. He walked on water. He did all these kind of things. When it come to, then they ask him, who is Jesus? What did he do? He denied the fact. They even knew him. That's where Peter was. But when it come to the end, what would Peter do? He was one of the greatest failures that you'd ever want to see. But God forgave him. And he become one of the greatest, greatest, greatest ministries in God in his time. Amen? Think about it. Think of, <coughs> He's not the only one in the Bible. You sit and think about all these people and look at what they've done with their life and God brings them right back. So you're sitting here this morning and you say, well, I have things in my life. But I don't think God likes. Well, give them to him. He'll take them. He'll clean them up. He'll clean you up. He'll make you fresh. He'll make you new. That's what he wants to do to us this morning. He wants to make us brand new. 
because the, for revival to come in here and for you to help somebody else to come to Christ, then you need to become a brand new yourself. Come on. I'm talking to you as Christians today. We the Christians, we need to ask God to walk new into our life, clean us up, straighten us up, because when somebody comes through that door, you're going to be the witness. You're going to lead them to the Lord. Sure, the pastors are going to get up and preach the word of God's going to lead them in and get talked to them, but they're going to watch your life, see where you're at. That's where we need to come to be in the glory of God this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Think of who, where you are, and I have already said that. He's planted an important seed. Don't forsake it. What God's planted in you and what you have, think about it. God is inside of you. The good ground are they in which an honest and a good heart, having heard the word, keep it bringing it forth. In Luke 8, 15, and I'm not going to read that this morning either, because go get your Bible out and look up some of these scriptures where God is walking with you. God is talking with you. Luke eleven twenty eight. 28, it says, Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Your blessings are coming. Don't walk away. God wants to build you. Maybe God had called you into a ministry or into some type of ministry, even back when you were younger, and you say, well, that's been long gone. That's not going to happen. No, when God puts a call in your life, if you're four years old or if you're 24 years old or if you're 80 years old and God has given you a call in your life, walk that call because God, it doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, God wants to use you this day because the world's in a mess today that we've never seen before in our time. And we need to be ready because God's going to bring them in. God's going to bring them in. The world may measure us by our success, but God measures us by our faithfulness. Are you faithful to him this morning? Amen. He's here for you. He's here for each one of us. He wants to walk with us. He wants to talk with us. And I put this, I have this scripture down in Isaiah 58, 13, and it says, and this is where people lack in the house of God. We must keep the Sabbath day holy by being faithful to his house. People are not faithful to the house of God today. Everything else comes first. That shouldn't. It shouldn't be. It should be where you, this is the first place you want to be on Sunday morning. Sunday night. Wednesday night. When God has the opportunity open for you to come here and worship, don't put things and family before God because it'll happen every time. It'll happen. God said, not doing your own pleasures on my holy day. Delights on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a spiritual delight. Keep the holy day of the Lord honorable, honor, and not going your own way or seeking and finding your own pleasures. He wants you to seek him. He wants you to find him today. He wants you to walk close to him because God is ready to move mightily. I'm telling you, you need to get your life straightened out. Some of you are sitting here this morning while well, you do some things you shouldn't do while well, you don't do them. If, you're, if, if you know that you're sitting here this morning and you have things in your life that you know should not be there, you need to ask God to forgive you this morning. You need to make a turnaround, complete turnaround, not halfways, and then go back. You need to make a complete turnaround. Jill's one example, and I'm, I'm using you for an example, Jill. God has miraculously changed her life. she gone, really went, really went the wrong direction. But God has come back into her life more powerful than ever before. And we've all been in places. Every one of you sitting here, you've been walking somewhere. God doesn't want you to walk. He wants you to be right by his side. He wants you to be in every service that you can be in. Come on. I'm not saying there's times you're going to have things you have to go to or do something. But I'm telling you that make yourself available for the house of God. Because it's so important that we walk with him. If we're going to talk about him, then we better walk about him. Let people see God in you. That they're going to want the God that you have in your life. It doesn't mean you have to be a down, downward person or 
you know, grumpy. No, God don't want you to be grumpy. God wants you to have joy. He wants you to be full. He wants you to have life more abundantly in him. You say, well, my family gets on my nerves. Well, pray for them. Pray for your family. They, yeah, they do get on your nerves once in a while. We all go through that, right? Come on. We need to start praying for our family and our friends and our self. Keep yourself walking, talking with God. Wherever you go, whatever you do, say, God, you go before me. Keep me clean. Keep me pure. Come on, that's, that's so important. That's a prayer we all should pray this morning. God, keep us, pure. keep us pure. Keep us clean. Keep our mouths clean. Come on. That's where a lot of our problems are, is right here. Come on. We say things and do things we shouldn't, and I'm, I'm just as guilty as anybody else. Right, Carla? Say Amen. We have to make sure we ask God. We got to walk with Him. We got to talk with Him. Everywhere we go, we have to re represent Jesus Christ. They're watching you. Huh? Say, oh, they don't watch me. Yes, they do. Back in the back row, um, what's your daughter's name? Madison. I see her on Facebook once in a while. But I said, God, you, you're leading that child. You're, you're walking with God. I know you are. Because things I've seen that you've put on Facebook and things that you do, that's where we need to come to the place that we stay there. Keep moving with God. You keep your family moving with God. Keep everybody moving with God. Because it's so important today. I'm telling you, it's so important that we walk close with God. Listen to what he's telling us. He's speaking to you this morning. Don't tell me he's not. Because I know he speaks to me. And I know he speaks to each one of you sitting here this morning. He wants you holy. He wants you clean. He wants you to be faithful. He wants you to serve him beyond anything else in your life. Because he is the most important thing in your life today. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to watch a new service every Sunday evening at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Watching on Facebook, please click the like button and leave a positive comment. And please share with others. YouTube watchers, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Help spread the good news of Jesus Christ.